Hello Blazer, this is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, Zuch there, welcome to a brand new video. In today's video guys, finally, we will be trying to conquer the weird Russian alphabets and the weird Cyrillic scripts. You guys ever looked at any Russian text online and, and were like, What is this? How can people read this? How does this make any sense and why does this exist? That is a brilliant question and that is exactly what I'm going to be trying to help you guys out with today. So what is the Russian alphabet? These weird letters that you see before yourself currently they're actually not only exclusive to the Russian alphabet or the Russian language like how like a lot of people think the Russian language is written in the Cyrillic script a lot of other similar languages use the Cyrillic script too and this is why a lot of the times people see like a Ukrainian or Belarusian text on the internet and they might assume that it's Russian but it's not so what is this Cyrillic script I'm talking about where did it come from and why does it exist let's talk about it the Cyrillic script was created in the 9th century by two Orthodox Christian scholars, Saints Cyril and Methodius, ordered by the Emperor of the Byzantine Empire. Last time that I mentioned Cyril and Methodius in a video of mine, I said that they were Greek, and it literally started World War III in the comments regarding if they were actually Greek or Bulgarian, so this time I'm just not going to say anything, okay? Anyway, the Cyrillic script was actually created as a new way to write the Old Church Slavonic language and for the translation of Greek religious texts. It is disputed whether Cyril and Methodius it really even created the Cyrillic script, because many scholars actually say that they created the Glagolic script, and then one of Cyril's students actually created the Cyrillic script. Regardless, Cyrillic was actually based... <laughs> Why, is, why am I laughing at this? Cyrillic itself was based on the Glagolic script and the Greek alphabet, which can actually be easily seen even today. A lot of letters used in modern Russian are actually basically the same as in modern Greek. Cyrillic started being used by most of the East Slavic Orthodox Christian world, and of course, the Rus. It became the main script that most Southern and Eastern Slavs used, while Western Slavs, such as the Poles and the Bohemians, were largely Catholic and didn't care for Cyrillic at all, so this is why they use Latin today. Throughout the centuries, Cyrillic evolved and changed its look, getting rid of some letters and including new ones. Eventually, as Slavic languages grew apart, every nation came up with their own modifications to the script that fit their phonetic system the best, adding new letters and removing some, as well as creating weird Frankensteinish creatures like this, and eventually all these modifications grew into separate alphabets. The Russian alphabet has undergone a few massive changes over the years, with the last one taking place during the Soviet times, when in 1917, Lenin decided to get rid of a few letters that look too bourgeois, I guess. Here's a fun fact, a common misconception with the Cyrillic script is that only Slavic languages use it, and that is actually not true. A lot of seemingly random Turkic and Iranic-speaking countries use Cyrillic. This includes Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and more. This technically means that if you know how to read Cyrillic, you can also read Mongolian. That's pretty crazy, but what is the correlation here? It is actually pretty simple, and it all boils down to the Soviet influence. A lot of countries influenced by the USSR or within the USSR itself adapted the Russian alphabet for their own languages. This also includes such regions that are within Russia right now as Chechnya, Tatarstan, Bakhshkartostan, and more. So yeah, you Latin using folk might think that Cyrillic is kinda weird, but it's kind of a big deal. Now let's try to learn the Russian alphabet. The Russian language contains 32 separate letters, which I decided to group for you guys into three categories. The first one are those that are similar looking to Latin or basically the exact same, so those that are the easiest to understand for you guys. The second are misleadingly similar letters to Latin, which look like Latin letters and you might try to read them as you would in English, but it's not read like that, it's actually the exact opposite. And the third would be the letters that are unique to Russian or to the Cyrillic scripts and and that basically have nothing in common and don't, don't look like uh, Latin letters at all. So, what are the similar letters to Latin? First of all is Ah, just like a A, nothing to talk about here. Next one is Ye, yeah, which is just like E, basically. The next is this one, you guys might say, is that a three? No, it's not a three, you idiot. A lot of you guys are probably like, this is, does not exist in Latin, but it does. Just think about cursive, lowercase cursive Latin, this exists, this is a Z. You know how in lower curse uh, English, for example, you would uh, write it out like that? So yeah, that's a Z. The next one is K or K, which is the exact same, nothing to talk about. M. Self-explanatory, or, which is an O, very easy, and the last one is T, or T, 
That's the thesis. That's literally it. Okay, now things actually going to start to get fun. Now we're getting into the second group, the second territory, which are misleadingly similar Russian Cyrillic letters, which are basically they look exactly like Latin letters, exactly like English letters, but they're completely different and make no sense. So here's the first one. Uh, pretty easy, right? It's a B. No, it's not a B, it's V. How dare you think this is a B? This is a V. <laughs> oh yeah, and I forgot to say, it's the third letter in the alphabet, by the way. So the alphabet goes like A, B, V. So, you know how pretty much uh, every alphabet kind of always starts with A, B, C or something close to it? Well, Russian starts with a, B, V. Why? Because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> Alright, let's get to the next one. This one right here. Seems pretty, pretty familiar as well. It's an H, right? No, it's not an H, it's an M. Yeah, I know, I know. The H is M in Russian. So like the word нет, this is the way we would spell it. It's spelled хет, you know? What, what, is, what, is, what is language at this point? None of this makes sense. What is happening here, okay? <laughs> Can my mom stop fucking yelling in the next room? This is crazy. Please donate to my Patreon, you guys. <laughs> now the next one. Looks like a P, right? But it's actually an R. It's R. So for example, my name, Roman, it's spelled like this. It's spelled like Poma in, in Russian, which is Raman. Next one is this right here. It looks like a C. And no, it's not a C, it's actually an S. This kind of makes sense, by the way, because the letter C in English can also uh, basically be pronounced as S a lot of the times. It's pronounced like K a lot of the times as well, but in Russian, this is never a K, it's only S, okay? Next one looks like a Y, right? But it's actually a U, it's a U. It makes an U sound. Once again, looks pretty much the exact same. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of different a little bit, but in cursive, cursive Russian and cursive English, it's the exact same. So. It's it's very misleading once again. This next one right here, it looks like an X, but it's actually a <sighs> sound. You know how when Russians laugh on the internet, they type in xak 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 xa? Well, it's actually ha ha ha, because this letter right here makes the <sighs> sound. Now it makes sense to you guys. And the last on this list is the legendary reversed R, I guess. Everybody loves to use this in like graphic design where they try to like spell Russia to make it look Russian, they replace the R with this, but uh, this is not even a consonant. This is actually a vowel, and what this letter is, is the letter yeah. So, for example, let's take what we've learned today. Russia, which is Russia in Russian. Check that out. That's an R. Russia. Yeah. You see? That last sound, yeah, that's the letter right here. Guys, this is crazy Russian knowledge, okay? By the end of this video, you're gonna be able to speak and read Russian fluently. Trust me. If you don't, you'll get your money back. No, you won't. <laughs> now, I said there's going to be three categories in this video, but I'll put one category that is a bit of a... that is slightly out of the norm. I don't even count it as actual letters, because these are purely phonetic sounds. These are letters that don't make any sound whatsoever. Yes, letters that don't make any sounds. You uh, English speakers right now might be like, how is that possible? Letters that don't make any sounds? Meanwhile, the English language has words like Q. <laughs> Where no letters have sounds. But yeah, that's the thing in a lot of languages. Certain letters exist just to show people how to pronounce certain things. They exist not to be actually pronounced, if that makes any sense. There's two letters in this category. The first one is called Mekki Znak, or a soft symbol. What this does is that if it's placed at the end of the word, it shows that the last consonant of the word will be softened. So for example, in a word like Mensche, which means less, it's right here. And you can hear it in the way I say it, Men she not mianshe mianshe because it's that that soft symbol shows that i need to put that little thing at the at the end of the sounds or for example the word for fire agon it's not agon agon and then there's the polar opposites of the soft symbol which is tvrdiznak the hard symbol it looks the exact same pretty much and its idea is that it's very rarely used actually in, in uh, today's speech and it's usually used in some words where you need to show that there's a certain like stop between the consonants and the vowel so for example in a word like but yes which is that which actually means like uh, the stereotype case of a uh, apartment building, of a comic block, if you will. Here it is in the sensor, and it shows the slight pronunciation difference you have to make when saying this word. If it wasn't there, you would say padiest. But because it's right there, you say padiest. So there's a bit of a 
stop to it, if you know what I mean. All right, now that we've done with that, let's talk about letters that are not similar to their Latin counterparts at all and are very pretty much unique to the Cyrillic scripts. The first one is B, and it's uh, it makes a B sound, pretty self-explanatory. It kind of looks like a G, I guess, to a lot of people, so yeah. Next one is G, and this one makes a G sound, and uh, it looks like a... Uh, Two sticks. <laughs> Literally, that's it. The next one is de. You probably have already seen this letter because it's used in like smileys online a lot. Also, it's used very often to like replace the A in like when people are doing like all sorts of graphic design or whatever once again, but it actually makes a D sound. This is the letter de. This one is really weird and a lot of people don't get it. This is your. <laughs> so this is basically a E or yeah, they put two dots on top of it, which is a, you know, that diacritic symbol it's called, and it makes the sound yo. So for example, in the word padion, which means a rise, you can see it right there, in, in the, and also you can see the uh, heart symbol in the, in the middle as well. Pod yom. So yeah, this let's say is a deaf tongue, it makes two sounds basically, yo. This next one that looks like an insect or something, I think this is by far the ugliest let's say in the Russian language, I don't know why maybe even, like aesthetically rating these letters right now, but I think this is genuinely the ugliest letter in the entire Russian language. I hate looking at it. It literally looks like a bug or something. I'm sorry, I don't know. I have a pet peeve with this letter. I don't like it. It's the letter Z. It makes the Z sound, kind of like a, like a B. You know, it's very similar to a lot of Slavic languages where they have like a Z with a with a little mark on top of it, and it also makes the Z sounds. This is that, but in the Russian alphabet, it looks like a bug, and I guess it makes the B sound. So you know, it, it makes sense. This next one right here, I probably should have actually included in the other in the other category, but this is uh, looks like an inverted N, but it's actually E. That's the, it, it literally is. E. It makes the E sound. This next one, which is basically the exact same but has a little mark on top of it right here, this is Y, or uh, the full name for it is E Kratke, which means E shortens. In Russian it's used not that often, but it's usually used at the end of uh, certain uh, adjectives. For example, an adjective like Krasivy. Uh, right here at the end you can see it and it gives it like that little Y ending. Y so literally that's the sound it makes. It makes a sound Y. Yo! <laughs> this next one is an L. Take this L, my, my dude. You know what? In English, you can do it like this. Take this L. In Russian, you have to do it. <laughs> like, 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 like this, I guess. This is how you say take this L in Russian. So yeah, that makes an L sound. Now, this next one right here actually might make some sense to you because it's actually Greek and it's used in mathematics and whatever. It's a pie. It's Pear. It makes the P sound and it pretty much looks like a pie. Like in Russian cursive, it's basically a pie, so it's, it's very easy to understand, I think. This next one right here also might be familiar to some of you. It's also Greek. It's an F. It makes a F sound, so uh, in Russian it's called F. This next one right here is kind of weird. Uh, very, very Slavic. Uh, it doesn't really exist in other languages, I think. Non-Slavic languages at least, right? This one is T. It makes the sound T. -t, -t, -t. It's kind of like, you know, like a hi-hat. Very Slavic, once again. This next one again, kind of looks like a butchered Y again, or actually lo looks like a H that's been flipped upside down, I think. This once again is a very Slavic sound, it's the sound CH. So this is the letter CH, and it makes the CH, -ch, -ch sound. Very, ma makes sense, right? This next one, which kind of looks like a W, is SH, and it makes the SH sounds. Pretty self-explanatory, I would say. Actually, one of the more aesthetically pleasing letters in the Russian language. I like it. Uh, <laughs> and this next one is basically a variation of the SH that we've just seen. It's SH. It's basically the exact same thing, except they added a little thing at the end of it right here. It's basically the same sound as SH that you guys might be familiar with, but but the tongue is put in a different position, like you basically put it th to your teeth, and so instead of SH, it ends up coming out as SH. Now this next sound is the one that everybody loves because this sound and this letter makes no sense to anybody at all and, and never will. It doesn't even make sense to a lot of Slavic speakers. This letter right here is the letter E. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That is the sound. That is an actual letter in the Russian language. 
E. A lot of foreign speakers that try to learn Russian have a lot of trouble pronouncing this particular letter because um, it, it doesn't exist in a lot of uh, European languages or English. So for example, bold and bankrupt, he doesn't know how to say the letter E. It's a very Russian thing. A lot of uh, foreigners just say E instead of it. It's a very complicated letter to say, you know, it's kind of like you need to imagine that you just got punched in the stomach really, really hard and you let out like a grunt. That's the sound you need to make. You're like somebody punches you and you're like, I don't know, dude. I guess Russians just get into so much drunk fights that they these grunts literally become actual letters in the language. I guess that I don't know. That's my theory right now. Now this next one is the letter E. It's basically uh, like yeah, but wider in a sense. So imagine you saying the letter yeah, but then you just kind of give it that oomph and you spread your mouth a bit wider and it's go it comes out like E. Eh. Uh, again, kind of sounds like a drunk fight grunts right here, but <laughs> what can you do? And finally, guys, we're down to our last letter in today's list. The last letter of our list is another diphthong, and it's this. This is the letter U. So once again, this is a letter that makes two sounds. It's just like the letter YA or YO. It makes two sounds. So a lot of Slavic languages actually write this with two letters. For example, in Serbian, uh, if you want to write YA, you would write it with a J and A, but the Russian language does not have a J. Or once again, that would write U as J-U, so it's like U. J-U is U. We just invented a whole new letter for it. U. This is it. This is what we use. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, I just gave you the entire list of all Russian letters uh, and divided them into different groups. This is not in alphabetical order, once again. I'm sorry, it's not. But yeah, hopefully now, after this lesson I've given you guys, you guys now are going to be at least able to read the simplest Russian words. I understand this, is st this stuff is hard to believe unless you really try. And a lot of people that are going to be watching this are not going to really try to. They're just gonna, you know, kind of gawk at it and forget it in the next five minutes. But hopefully some of you guys actually will be inspired by this video and actually will be able to read something, at least uh, some very, very simple words. And actually, at least you guys could maybe memorize that this is an uh, R and not a P. Or that this is an N or not an H or that this is a H and not a X. And now hopefully you guys are going to be able to understand why in Russian the word restaurant is spelled like Pektopa. It's not Pektopa, it's Ristaram. <laughs> so yeah guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I hope you guys did enjoy this little Russian lesson today. If you guys did enjoy it, please make sure to slap the motherfucking like on it. Also, if you guys want to support my channel, if you guys want to help me out, if you want to support my YouTube craft throughout these very hard times, make sure to, you know, go over down in the description to my Patreon link. Donate to it. I would gladly appreciate it, you guys. It helps me out a ton. So yeah guys, once again, thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.